Okay guys, so today I'm going to be talking about an extremely important subject. If you've been following this channel for a little while, you'll know that I visited one of the Rohingya refugee camps in Bangladesh. And there has been some developments with the refugees who are fleeing from Myanmar into Bangladesh. I'll give you an extremely brief outline of what's happening at the moment and for what has been happening for a while now. So the Rohingya ethnic group have been fleeing from Myanmar because of so-called ethnic cleansing. The things that are happening there are absolutely horrific. I think they have started to slow down a bit, but there are still refugees coming into Bangladesh. What the Myanmar military is doing is they go into these Rohingya villages, they burn down the houses, they rape the women, they kill the children. How this all started. In 2012, some Rohingya men allegedly raped and murdered a Myanmar Buddhist woman. From then on, there was a back and forth of terrible acts between both groups. The Myanmar government's response to this was to go in and just try and wipe out the entire race. Hundreds of thousands of men, women and children just getting massacred on an unthinkable scale. And that can never be the answer. In between 500,000 to a million refugees right now living in Bangladesh because the Bangladesh government has very kindly allowed them to come into their country and seek refuge. Working with companies like UNICEF and the World Food Program, those were the two main ones I saw when I was there near the end of last year. And so that's why I'm naming them. But there are many other organizations that are helping out too. They are trying their best from what I saw to feed the refugees. I just want to do an update on this because it's an extremely important topic and it's hardly covered in media. One of the reasons I think that it's hardly covered in media, well, especially Western media, is because there's nothing in Bangladesh or Myanmar that, let's say, a Western country would want to go and take their resources, for example, oil, like what we all know happens in the Middle East. So the purpose of this video is to kind of shine light on that because it's easy for me to go there, film a vlog and just leave and forget about it, you know, but I want to keep shining a light on this because it's an extremely underrated story and it needs a lot more attention. I'm going to tell you just a few facts and some developments that are happening. The Myanmar government's actually starting to allow the Rohingya refugees to return to Myanmar, but there are a few issues with that. So like I was saying, the refugees that are coming into Bangladesh have dropped significantly, but they're still coming in, which means that there's still terrible things going on in Myanmar. This fact that I'm about to tell you pretty much sums it up to me. The Myanmar government has has not been letting the United Nations human rights people to go in and assess the situation in Myanmar. And if that doesn't say everything, then I don't know what does. The UN's human rights people are working with the people in Bangladesh, but they're not allowed to cross into Myanmar. There has been an agreement made between the Myanmar government and the Bangladeshi government for the Myanmar government to start accepting refugees. But the refugees that are in Bangladesh in the refugee camps prefer to live in the refugee camps because a lot of their houses have been destroyed in their villages. They're too scared to go back because they fear for their lives and their family's lives. There's a high chance that they'll end up in a refugee camp in Myanmar anyway. They don't know what the circumstances are like in a Myanmar refugee camp. They could be worse than the circumstances in the Bangladeshi refugee camps. The Bangladeshi government is still in the process of handing over the list of names of the refugees to the Myanmar government. It's a huge mess and it takes so much organization. We're talking about a population of people that is bigger than some countries. This is not a small thing. Thing. This is huge. You hardly ever see it on the media. The media corporation that I've seen making the most reports on this topic is Al Jazeera. Many other media outlets are not covering this. Um, I know BBC does a bit more. But to be honest, I have not seen much from huge American outlets. It's insane. And, and like I said, vested interests. And I just want to outline what a great impact Bangladesh has made on this whole situation. From the research I've done and when I was there in the refugee camps, the refugees are extremely great grateful to the Bangladeshi people and the Bangladeshi government for opening their doors and their hearts and letting them in. And when I was there, I'd see local Bangladeshi people coming to the refugee camp and giving food to these refugees, which is incredible. So a huge shout out to the people of Bangladesh and the Bangladeshi government for stepping out and, and doing this. Like all governments have problems, but this is super cool and I'm very impressed. So thank you, Bangladesh as a whole for what you're doing there. Because without you, I mean, who knows where these people would be right now. The Bangladeshi government spending billions of dollars to shelter these refugees and to help supply food. This is for hundreds of thousands of people. There's a rough estimate of 1 million people. This is huge. That's the same population of the biggest city in my country of New Zealand. It's just insane. That's a lot of people. 
So that's all the facts that I'm going to tell you for today. I just wanted to come back to the subject because, you know, you see it all the time on the news, you know, something's relevant today and then, you know, we've got to keep the ratings up so if we need a new story, forget about the old one. Obviously, personally, it, it had an emotional effect on me and I think it's very relevant for the world to know because it's not been covered like I mentioned. I'm going to leave some links below where you can donate if you want to. I'm going to leave it in the description. I'm going to leave it the top comment. I'll also leave the videos of when I visited the refugee camps and as well as the interview I did with one of the refugees where he tells me the horrific things he had to go through to get to where he is. So yeah, I, d I just kind of wanted to float this back to the top. I'm going to end the video there guys. Obviously not the happiest video but I felt like I had to make it. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider at least just having a look through the links. I mean if you can't spare a dollar or two then that's fine but just you know talk to people about it you know say did you know this is happening and, and just try to make a, a bigger awareness of this situation because it's it's no joke this is like one of the worst humanitarian disasters of all time it's crazy and it's ongoing you know it's nowhere near resolved because the Myanmar government says that we're going to take back some refugees no that's that's a bit of PR because of international pressure so talk to your friends about it send them this video if you want to just you know get the message out Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hello. 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 Hello.